So well, welcome to the September 9th, uh, not that one of our neighborhood council meeting. We're going to uh, do a roll call. We're going to start from uh, my right with John. John Brady. And Daniel, Tony Bowie, Tony July, Stephen Pascantilli, Mario Landa, Joe Mendoza, Brian Kenny, Rob Rocky, 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 Rob and then we uh, take a vote and we vote by a show of hands. We use Robert's rules in case you're wondering. Okay? Um, and I apologize for not having a call to share. Um, Nicole Leo from Neighborhood Services, any, anyone? Hello. And Maria from Representative Michael with his office. Is there also anything to announce? Hello. Senator Petroselli. Rep Mike Woods is here in spirit. Um, I don't see anyone from Council Member Martinez's office. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the community reports and I'm going to start with uh, Brian Kenny. We're supposed to have the Commissioner for Transportation here today, but there was a scheduling conflict, so number eight on our agenda is not going to be here. He's going to be here next month at our October meeting, but I'm going to give Brian a minute to do uh, a few words. Sure. Uh, as Stephen said, he, um, Commissioner Tenlin uh, canceled on us actually this morning after knowing about the meeting for over a month and a half. Uh, we're disappointed that he's not here to address parking issues in the neighborhood. I apologize to anyone who came out tonight to uh, ask him questions, and we're hoping to get him here for the October meeting. Um, I have a whole list of, of questions to ask him, but him not being here, there's one issue that I did want to point out, um, and that was a, a, an incident that took place on Friday, August 9th, um, uh, the week before for the first for the feast from August 2nd to 4th. There was uh, these signs that were hung up all along Commercial Street, basically from Waterfront Cafe to uh, to Battery Street. As you can see, it says no stopping in time Friday through Sunday. And right below it said August 2nd through 4th. Um, the cars were all properly flagged 72 hours beforehand. People moved their cars. Um, then the feast afterwards, Friday, August 9th, I came out uh, on my way to work and I noticed that these same signs from the week before were still up. Um, I got told, by the way. What's that? I got Did told. You get told? And, okay. the, and I told them that the signs were mislabeled. So I came out Friday morning. Noticed that I hadn't changed the signs. I said, "Oh, that's kind of weird, considering you know they, they did this last week for the feast. Why not do it this week?" Um, and then I came home at Friday at seven at night, and all those cars, there was probably fourteen cars, Damien's was one of them, were, to, were towed or being towed. So I, I went up to the uh, two gentlemen that were doing the towing from the Boston Transportation Department and asked why the cars hadn't been properly flagged and why they're now being towed without giving the proper notice. Um, I was told that someone involved with the feast that weekend also worked for the city, for the Boston Transportation Department, and uh, told them to tow all the cars. But they're clever enough to rip off the bottom part that said August 2nd through 4th. So you would assume that it was for actually this following weekend. Um, I made a call to the mayor's office, um, you know, explain the situation. I, I didn't have a dog in the fight, my car was not towed but uh, explain the situation that as it was occurring um, and mayor mayor's hotline never got back to me. So I encourage anyone who was towed that day, Friday, August 7th to, or I'm sorry, Friday, August 9th to contact the Boston Transportation Department as well as the mayor's office and, and seek reimbursement for that time. Is that it, Brian? Can I say something? Sure, Judge. Again, I just want to reinforce what, what Ryan said first. Commissioner Timbling had an appointment with us today and I'm going to be a little bit more planned. He blew us off. He decided not to show up. Okay? At last minute. You know, which I find it to be, uh, you know, quite insulting since this issue that we've been talking about parking, you know, thing, a signage and stuff like that over a year and a half old. that haven't been resolved yet. So, Commissioner Tim, we should realize that he is a public servant and when the public meets his, makes an appointment with him, we expect him to show up. Thank you. Um, public safety. Um, David Marks is going to get Mar and Marie is going to read the uh, public safety report just to real. Okay. Um, so the August 2013 public safety report, we have the numbers 276 people signed the petition that Stephen and um, a couple of others started about getting more police presence in the neighborhood. So as of August 1st, there were 276 signatures. Part 1 crime reported by the BPD for District Area 1 from January 1st to July 22nd was down 
compared to the same time a year ago. There were five robberies this year, seven total arrests in July 2013, three non-bend people for drug fights at Hanover and Cross Street, etc. There was a large fight at Commercial and Foster Streets on July 28, 2013 at 12.40 a.m. in which a large group of teenagers, aged 18 to 22, from Chelsea, Tuxbury, and Wilmington, throwing bottles and cans, and they were allegedly involved earlier in an altercation that evening involving knives and bats. For the September Public Safety Report, there were 32 fewer Part 1 crimes in the North End this year, again January through August, compared to the same period last year. Two extra gang cars were added to the thieves' patrols after the first thieves' per resident request. There were 15 to 20 field stops, warnings made by Boston police in the North End during the feast, moving teenagers out of cops late at night. And there were five loud party related calls made to the police from Thursday, August 29th through Sunday, September 1st. Larcenies not including car breaks, 10 more over the last 30 days compared to the same period last year, mostly high end bicycles and iPhones. There were at least four arrests in August 2013, non North End residents disorderly conduct, drugs, open and gross movements. Five larcenies for motor vehicles, down from 15 compared to the same period last year. So, yeah, that's a public safety report. No David's absence. You know something, Amy, I didn't even recognize you here from the Greenway, um, Amy Dwyer. Um, which brings me to the Greenway report, which John Craig usually um, has uh, some info for us. Yes, I do. All right, so, um, and as Stephen said, thanks Amy for being here. Um, for the carousel, it just opened uh, recently. The rides are $3 each. A book of 10 tickets is 25 They accept cash and credit. It's open till the end of August, um, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Sunday through Thursday, and it's extended till 9 on Fridays and Saturdays. Uh, in the first three days, they sold over 6,000 tickets, and it's really nice, so I suggest the end of August. Uh, the end of October, sorry. Uh, and in the first three days of operation, they sold over 6,000 tickets. It's really nice. I suggest you go down there. Just a quick note about programming. We talked a little bit about this last uh, month, but we've had over 50 events in North End Parks over the summer. Um, a few were city sports who had the weekly CrossFit classes in Parcel 8. We had the um, Ali Baldessari, had the Pilates classes, and the Berkeley Concert Series were also over there. And as we also expressed uh, last month, we've had as a response to the community meeting this a few months ago umbrellas have been in there um, for a few weeks now I guess right and then uh, we also replaced the tables and chairs which had a lot of added wear and tear so that was great and um, finally the mural in Dewey Square which you may or may not like mostly probably don't like but in any case that's coming down this week and will be replaced next week so I uh, look forward to seeing what new public art will be there do you have anything else to add or? No, I think um, the carousel will close full time in October. It'll be open on weekends. Oh, okay. Hopefully, right. it'll be open for first. In the winter? Night. Yeah. yeah. Until first night, and then January first, we'll button it up until April. But we're hoping the weekends, weather permitting, to January first. And we are looking forward to the mural going up. Um, Matthew Ritchie is a contemporary artist who's uh, uh, from Britain originally, but he's uh, based out of New York, and that will go up um, beginning next week. Yeah, yeah. So the take us down this week. Carousel is awesome if you have kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to start the agenda, but just just real quick, um, just for the record, I, I, I want to make sure I state this. Um, you know, people disappointed. The Commissioner of Transportation isn't here. He was going to send someone in his place. We didn't feel that we wanted to speak to anyone other than the Commissioner, so that's why we decided to bring him in um, next month because we would like to speak to the Commissioner and, and, and not a Deputy Commissioner or mm -hmm. some. Uh, Community uh, relations uh, employee of the transportation department. So um, he did offer. I just want to make that. I don't. I don't want people to think he just totally blew us off. But um, we're going to have it here next month. He will be here um, the day after Columbus Day. I don't know the date, but he will be here. All right. So Six Foster Street is first, and that's MG Montanetti LLC seeking his only areas of change. See in the three family the four. Uh, good evening, Bill Ferrolo, representing uh, Anthony Montietti, who's uh, to my left. And to his left is uh, Michael Belarusso, who uh, is a 
contractor that's involved in this proposal. Uh, many of you probably know Anthony and his family. They have uh, been not their residents uh, for a very long time. And they're property owners uh, in the North End. Uh, I believe currently four, five, five, five buildings uh, under their ownership uh, uh, in the North End. I raised that because he's an uh, active landlord. He's not an active landlord. Very familiar with his properties and his tenants. So he recently, in January of this year, purchased uh, Six Foster Street. Uh, Six Foster is approximately halfway down Foster. If you're coming from Charter Street, it'll be on the left hand side of Foster uh, and sits closer to the middle uh, of Foster Street. Uh, what uh, is the situation here is four and six Foster. Uh, three-story buildings that uh, abut each other. Four is owned by Keith Burt, the uh, uh, The buildings on either side of that are one or more stories taller than these two buildings. Uh, and uh, the street goes downhill towards commercial. Uh, and even with that, the next building uh, to this is 12. That's separated, <coughs> separated by a small uh, yard that actually has a name, uh, which uh, I think only learned today is, uh, I believe it's pronounced Phipps uh, Court. But it's a small yard about uh, maybe eight feet wide that separates uh, this building six from the building at 12. Uh, the building at 12, as I mentioned, is, uh, is one story uh, taller than this building. Uh, the, proposal is to do two things with this property. One is to take uh, a vacant basement and use half of it for common area, uh, which you will see in the plans, <coughs> that include uh, laundry area for storage, and the other half of the basement to be used as part of the first floor apartment. The first floor apartment currently is uh, somewhere around 320 square feet, very small. This would uh, allow that apartment to be approximately 600 square feet uh, when it's finished. The second floor unit is 377 square feet. The third floor unit is also 377 square feet. The fourth floor unit, which is the proposed addition, would be a little bit larger at 525 because you wouldn't lose the space for the common stairway, etc. Now takes you up to the upper floor. So uh, the new floor of the building would be roughly the size of the building itself, 525 square feet. So the entire lot is 544, 543, I should say, square feet. I don't want to confuse you. Uh, the significance is it takes up the whole lot and very little uh, area on each floor. That's the reason that Anthony would like to completely rehab this building make it a sprinkler building up to code, the fire code, uh, and <clears throat> make these units uh, in a much better condition than they currently are uh, as of the time of this purchase. The uh, proposal that we have before you, uh, let me give you some, some heights. The existing height of the building today is 34, 34 feet of the roof line. And it has a head house at the rear of that roof that accesses the existing roof. Right now, the existing roof is just a uh, rubber roof that has no decking on it. Uh, the proposal is to add a floor to the building, which would make the roof line 41 feet 8 inches, uh, and to put a roof back uh, on that, uh, that roof uh, that's limited to be used by the top floor unit only. That would also have a head house uh, identical in size to the head house that exists today, but up one level. Uh, the access to uh, the roof is only by that, that one unit, and it's by the head house that's in the rear, uh, lined up with where the head house would be today. Uh, Mr. Burton, who owns four, has re recently redone his building. He's talked to Anthony, etc. He came to uh, Zoning and Licensing Committee to review the plans with us. Uh, we 
was talking to us about issues about construction, etc. But uh, he hasn't raised any objection. And as a matter of fact, since these buildings are nearly mirror images, he's also looking at the potential that he may do the same. He uses his building as a one fair. This building was purchased uh, in January, as I mentioned, uh, from uh, Herb Cohen, who owns the two buildings directly across from this on Foster Street. So uh, he supported this as well. Uh, 12 is owned by a fellow by the name of Draw Ashore, uh, A-S-H-U-A-H. -H. Uh, I spoke to Draw uh, myself, and uh, he was going to speak to his wife to see if there was any issues that she had with that. From that means. Uh, so, I have given you copies of the plans, I've given you the refusal letter of the appeal, and I've given you uh, the notice that we sent to all of the abutting property owners as well as the residents of all those buildings uh, on the street as well as uh, on Charter Street because the last building on Foster was actually a Charter Street entry building and runs behind it. So, uh, I think so. Yeah. Um, the fourth floor, are you going to the fourth floor? Is that the main window? Um, it's all going to be Yes. Questions from the council? There's no plans for any parking whatsoever, I see. There's no parking. It's, uh, People may be aware of uh, the Port has that area there that the city took what used to be a pocket uh, playground that wasn't used and allows it now for us in the parking. So Most of my tenants do not have vehicles. But there's no place on site for parking. That's why I just No, I know. I just, as, as we've discussed, there's always a parking issue, and we're now we're adding an additional story. Right, and you're at an additional unit. That's the five right. units. So, so the, the staircase it goes up to the it goes up to the, the top unit and then the, the, um, the roof that was only occupied by unit four. Uh, you whatever. can only access it from that unit. Can I ask a question too? Uh, you manage your properties from here to there. You have yes. an office here. Yeah. What's your office? Three old two notch. Three and a half hours a week. Seven days. Seven days a week. Very good. Yes, please. Um, this building is a just, just uh, um, that be, yes. So it isn't for everybody. No, no, no. no. You, you no. and they can't get to it either. It's, they'd have to go through the uh, top unit and not to get to it. Since the building has sprinklers, they they don't have to have the means of egress by going through the roof. So how many beds are on the top floor? These are all ones. One bed. They're all ones, even the top. Yes. And they one bed. Yes, five hundred square feet. Yeah, yeah, one bed. Yeah. In, in the past, it's been the policy, or basically, you know, we try to avoid having roof decks on buildings that don't have private access to an owner-occupied unit. Absolutely. Would, would you be opposed to us making or supporting this this project if there were no deck? Sure, I think I would. Yeah. I mean, it's out of necessity. Yeah. I, I, absolutely, Tony. I'm it's, not. It's, it's just it's, it's been a problem. No, I I, I totally and, I I, I know, know you guys are coming from. All my properties that I do have decks are all private decks, so only those people can go out there. And I laid the law down my tenants. We, I, we, I, I, we, we've never had a problem. Never. Right? I, I, I maybe laid, maybe Anthony, that you know I I think that the project is is fine. Yeah, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that, but, Tony. But absolutely. maybe maybe like in couple of years if things work out with this property and, and you know maybe things settle down in this neighborhood and people aren't attacking us for, for giving permission for roof mm -hmm. tax then you know, maybe but absolutely yes. yeah I, yeah uh, I can understand it, there's pluses and minuses meaning just to illustrate uh, the flat roof that will exist on the building is accessed by that unit now we can put things in leases to other people Roof doesn't you know, put a chain on your leg and keep them from going up the roof. Uh, why do I say that? Sometimes 
a roof that, that is fenced, etc., is a much safer circumstance than one that's just a plain flat roof. Right. Now, I, I know we have all the problems we have, and I, I couldn't agree with you more about roof decks and potties. The question becomes, in a situation like this, it's, there's pluses and there's minuses as far as having it and not having it. Right. So. And, and, and we, we discussed this earlier before, um, before you all came in, and the thing is that because your building is sprinkled and it doesn't actually need roof access, then you can actually lock the door and it's, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not yeah. in, a, a, in violation of the fire code. And you, can put a, you don't even have to because if, if nobody need go up the roof, then you can actually keep it locked. There's no emergency that you would need to go up the roof if there's a sprinkler system in the building, correct? I don't know if the fire department would allow you to. I no, no, even not even as not not an egress, I don't know that that's that's a lot. If it's all, if it's all occupied, that there means an egress, so I don't, I don't think you would. No, do I that. I don't know the answer. You, got one, you have to keep in mind too, you get a lot of trouble. You have an apartment that has the only access to the roof without a railing on it. You know what I mean? I, I, you know, it's it's. it's I don't Is know. it a flat roof building, or you saying it's, it's not? It's not a flat. flat. Roof. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a, yeah, again. It's not that the people sitting here don't understand the, the roof deck issue. Uh, you know, we, we live here, we, we know what it's like, etc. I'm just saying that uh, the double whammy involved in these things is that people get up on decks, uh, on roofs, I should say. Uh, you know, we've seen it a couple of times already here in the neighborhood where you know, people have fallen off the end of the street and they get where else. Someone's fallen off the ship. Can I ask a question? <coughs> In, when you lease, when you lease an apartment with a with a with a, with a roof deck, yes. do you include the the rules of the use of the of the roof? Deck? I, I have a tenants come to my office and I talk to them about it and they're in each lease. Everything's in the lease. So you have instructions for what? Oh, absolutely. I, I have a lot of standards. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. But but you want to understand? Yes. Oh, it's that, totally that, that the, the the proposal that's going to hit 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 our, our table is that. You know, it's the expansion of the first floor into the basement, which I don't have a problem with. Mm -hmm. Then it's going to be the adding one story addition to the building, which I don't have a problem with. But it's the roof deck, but it comes as a package. So unless you remove the roof deck, then the package is maybe not that acceptable. Whereas if the roof deck is removed, then maybe the package is more acceptable. I have no problem with the roof deck. Does anyone else have a problem with the roof deck? <laughs> I, I think that's that's what we're saying to you is the roof deck is going to make a break. You know, what Anthony is saying, the roof deck's not a big issue. If the board feels that they're more comfortable approving this project without the roof deck, we respect that. So, the well, I mean, in, in the past, I know that obviously no one showed up from the community, but in the past, we have gotten the last for approving the roof decks. Well, that's a, that's a point I wanted to make. Is this there's no one in the room opposing it, Tony. There's no, they all got their notification. They're not here to make it. No one's asking any questions about it. So it would be very difficult for anybody to, to give you guys backslash for approving it. Oh, and I can tell you right now, we're probably going to go before zoning asking for well, it. Well, excuse me. I don't think Tony speaks for all of us. I think that we haven't made a decision on how we're going to vote. We haven't made a motion to vote. So and, and just yeah. putting out a message, that's fine. The rest of us need to make our, our own decision on how we're going to vote for this. Let's not be carried away, all right? So we understand her point, and now let's carry on. Who's next to speak and say to the, to the audience if that's what it is? We're about to call any, any council member, any other, hold on. Any, sure. Anyone else have any questions? Any question already? Oh, I, I, can, I can see uh, Tony's point. I can see the point. Because, okay. I mean, yeah, there could be a, a couple that can rent that apartment and be exclusive to their roof deck and invite 40 couples. Now you've got a wild party. Yeah, but five hundred square feet is great. Tough to split forty feet, eighty people. I think she's just. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think the point she's trying to make is that it may escalate. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but I don't think we do have a couple of bad apples for the bunch. That's that's our opinion. That's why we vote by a show of hands, and the majority will win when we vote. Does anyone else have a question? Sean, you have a question? Oh, no, I was just saying. Okay. I have a comment. Not sure. A question. Sure. The comment is it seems like uh, every time something goes bad in this neighborhood, we tend to give the people who have made this neighborhood and who are good people, good solid landlords, we tend to, you know, maybe not give them the opportunity after all they've shown us and proven in the neighborhood. So I, 
I don't see why you guys would have a problem with the roof deck that's only accessible to the tenant and that you have a landlord that says, hey, these are the rules right here. They're written and I'm giving to you verbally. He's a responsible guy. You guys never have any problems. So I think we should all be taken as individuals and not make a group thing like no more roof decks. No more roof decks for absentee landlords that don't care about the neighborhood. I'm with that one. That's all I have to say. Anyone else have any questions? No, but it's, it's a difficult distinction to make. I mean, no, it you is. I mean, it's, it's you know, the, the other thing that we get blamed for all the time is favoritism. And that's, you know, we take we take a lot of hits. I mean, we take a lot of comments and we take a lot of reviews for, for you know, the decisions that we make here. And this is not an easy position and it's not, it's not easy to sit here and you know try to help the community and do what's best for the community. It's not it's not that simple. Favoritism if the person who's applying for it has a questionable character in the past. But when someone's an upstanding uh, member of the community, was, I don't think you can cite favoritism. I'm sorry, I'm talking. I don't think you can cite favoritism. Please let me, please let me finish. I think it's ridiculous, Stephen, that I got to a guy like that. I'm sorry. That's my opinion on the time. Thank you, Sal. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, Sal DiGirolamo, uh, about then resident. I, I think the point that Michael made is uh, a very strong point. There's no one here opposing it. There's no one that lives in that area opposing it. And, you know, I, I can understand that the position you're in is a difficult one, you know, with not then residents that get upset with some of the decisions you make. But like when you took the position, like you kind of like knew that was going to be happening. You know, I like to say you're, you're in a position that that's difficult. So you can't satisfy, you know, everybody. And I agree. This is this is a guy that that's a hands-on landlord. It's not well, like he's. I agree with you. And I, we totally understand where you're coming from. We we. On Fleet Street, we had a common roof deck that we legally put on the roof and we had it. And we never had any problems and we removed it because of the new tenant uh, uh, stampede in the neighborhood. Because we don't know who we're going to get. They come in with their parents and they sign leases and everybody's happy. And before you know, we got a full grown body on the roof, right? So we removed that roof deck. So we understand the whole idea behind the common roof deck problem and, and, and your, the point that you guys are trying to make as a board to say, hey, look, we take a lot of heat for approving things that people don't want, right? But like like uh, Billy said, the gentleman next door who's a single family owner, right? He renovated the building. I, I believe he went through your office at the time. Mm -hmm. He's a nice enough guy. He was also engaged in, in talking about also he has a roof deck that was approved, right? Because he's a single family owner occupant and I totally understand and I'm all for that as well. He is also gonna go for the addition so that we can make them true sister buildings and look attractive nice. from the street and attractive from his what would be a valley now because if we build up he's got a higher building on the other side of him so now he'll be buried on his roof then so when he comes before you board, he's going to ask for a roof deck and you're going to have to give it to him as an owner occupant and then now we don't have sister buildings anymore we don't have our roof deck and he got hits so we really ask you to just approve the roof deck oh, i just want to get i want to get back i just want to make 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 one point all of this i think uh I'm getting a little confused now. But we're not we're not here to, to tell you that you're not a good landlord because you are a good landlord and my grandmother's a landlord and you're a very good landlord. Thank you. And I don't care what people think about how I vote on an issue. I vote how I feel. And if people don't like my vote, then every May they come in here, they vote against me if they don't think I do the right thing by the neighborhood. I do everything I can. When I when I vote, I don't vote as a president, I don't vote at a time. But so there's two arguments to everything. I, I understand Tony's argument, I understand George's argument, I can kind of feel where you guys are going here. My point is, yeah, we send out letters of notice, and I believe wholeheartedly that Billy notified all of these abutters, because he's very thorough and he does a good job, and that's just a fact. Billy is very thorough. Um, but you made a comment like we're going to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals anyways and apply for the roof deck, whether we vote for it or against so it. I understand that, but if, 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 if I mean, the other, the other question is, if you have so much support, then you know, we'd have a stack of, of, of letters from our butts, which I'm not asking you for, because I'm, I'm, I'm taking you at your word if you notify these people so they be here. Personally, do I have a question? Do I have a problem with roof decks? 
no, I don't if they're unoccupied. The buildings can get sold too. You can turn around next year, sell the building, and we don't know who owns the building. So that's why we ask these questions, mm -hmm. and we're, it's our job to ask these no, questions. You know what I'm saying? Again, I'm, I'm I thought gonna, this was going to be a simple request tonight, to be no, honest. I'm only going to repeat what I said before. The, the roof deck doesn't make or break this project. In other words, we thought the roof deck was a nice accommodation for that possible unit. But we respect the job you have to do, and we will respect the vote that you take. Meaning, if the majority feel that the roof deck isn't a problem yet, great. If the majority feels that the roof deck is a problem, we won't do the roof deck. So, whichever way you vote, we'll follow the other. Can I just say one thing? I just want to go back to what Billy said before. If you have a roof deck, whether it's a legal roof deck or a not legal roof deck, people roof. are going on the roof. Yeah. I just saw it <laughs> an hour ago across the way from yeah. me. People were on the roof, it's not a legal roof. So I would rather have someone have a legal roof that's Protected. safe yeah. than have these kids do you want all crazy things on these roofs? And it's going to happen eventually. It is going to happen because I just saw it's I just saw happened. it an hour ago. It happened just recently. Actually. But someone's going down you know, all the way. You time. know, unfortunately, someone you know could but, get hurt. By the way, a nice, a nice, said so say forty something year old couple. Their kids are in college. They bought a nice condo unit with a roof deck. It happened. Twenty couples over, forty couples over for their party. So that's just, it's like. So we're kind of balancing what we all want. We all want everybody to be safe and sound and happy to be It's very difficult to do It's a big difference between the and the Not all the time. Not all the time. Most of the time, but not all the time. Does anyone want to make a motion? Does anyone else have any questions? I have to make a motion. I have to make a motion to support the petition as it's in uh, seeking a uh, showing variation to change the occupancy from a three family dwelling to a four family, the first four unit will be expanded into the basement, and the new one story addition with the roof deck uh, will uh, create the four units. Does anyone there's, so, to there's, it, there's a motion on the floor. Does anyone second the motion? Second. 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 So there's a motion on the floor by George, was second by Ryan and John, and it's to uh, seek a zoning variant. To seek a zoning variant to change the occupancy from a three-family dwelling to a four-family. First of all, you know, will be expanding the basement in a new one-story addition with the roof deck. So will create the fourth unit on the family. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. All opposed and there's one opposition. Eight to one. Support, eight to one. Thank you very much. Thank you. And just as an aside. I grew up in an apartment, but the roof deck was three times the size of the apartment, so we spent a lot of time on the roof deck. Well, I totally understand your concern. It's, it's, I didn't want to oppose, because I think the rest of it was good. I just wanted to I, I, I totally un I understand, and don't, I would never rent to, you know what I mean? No, I'm not like that. You know, I, well, when, when, we put, when we put something out that is, you know, no no on, on owner occupied units. I mean, like, you know, we have to have some of this. Next, it says Melina, but her father Damien is here. They're opening a spin studio. Well, Melina's opening a spin studio and just part of the home location of our meeting. Hall. Well, couldn't be here tonight because uh, her sister um, is at a big swim meet and she wanted to go there and support her. So I told her that I would take care of this because we just wanted to get on the agenda. Uh, Melina, uh, my daughter Melina, wants to open a spin studio uh, on Lewis Street where the Armenis Oliver Company is. The space, you're looking at the building, the space to the right. Uh, the reason I'm here is to get your approval so that I can have a, a letter of approval and also because I guess there's a uh, uh, the place now got a certificate, a certificate of occupancy in all the years that it's been there. But the building inspector came out, the building department came down and they said, okay, you know, it's uh, three apartments, uh, one office, and one retail. So it's zone general business, and, you know, there's a chance I may need a variance, there's a chance we may not need a variance. But it's not going to be a big deal to get one because of what we're doing there. 
Um, on the main floor, when you walk in, she's going to have her juice bar. Uh, you know, uh, smoothies, fresh squeeze, fresh pressed juices, that kind of stuff, all healthy things. There won't be any cooking there, there won't be any goods there, nothing like that. There's no structural work being done at all in the spot. And downstairs in the basement, um, she wants to put her spin studio with roughly 20 to 30 uh, bikes. Street level downstairs. So I don't know if everybody knows what spin is, but spin is an exercise class basically where you get on a stationary bicycle and you get a hell of a workout for an hour. And then hopefully they go upstairs after and they have a, a juice. And that's it. Hopefully as many as she could get in there, but probably about 20 to you know, 20 to 30, I mean, you can fit a, a bunch of bikes down there, there's plenty of space. You know, whatever we can legally do, anything that we can do legally, we can do. There's egress already there. Uh, the building inspector did come by and give a quick look, and he said we really wouldn't have to do much as far as that goes. What about the outside? What about the inside? What are you going to do as far as signage? There will be a sign on the outside, what yes. Kind of, what kind of sign? Right, well, like Pinkberry sign. And all <laughs> crazy colors, and it's going to say ETC Juicery. It's going to be a, a sign that everyone will be happy with. We're going to follow all the rules of proper signage. Uh, you guys know my restaurants. My signs are pretty good, I think. They're not too crazy. And I guarantee you they won't be as bad as uh, some of the illegal signs and bad signs that we've gone up the It's going to be simple. It's a logo with a, a spoke, you know. What else? Anyone have questions on the council? No questions? Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Oh, I got this. No, you can say my partner. No, I thought I gave you a call. Anyone have a question in the audience? Motion to support. Second by George. Motion to support the spin studio and juice bar at the former location of Menace Oil Oil Company. All in favor. Unanimous. Nine zero. Thank you, everyone.